Poon and Hickey, you look well and rested. Good morning. Good morning. You had a bit of sun. Oh, no, no. I had a, had a week off. It's amazing how, how good you feel after a week off. It's yeah. called a staycation when you take time off and stay at home. Is that what you had, a staycation? Yeah, yeah. yeah at home. It's good. Bank lending rates, what can you tell us about that information? Well, I get very excited about bank lending. It tells you a lot about the economy. And if you look at what banks are lending to farmers right now, they're lending them hand over fist and much more than any other part of the economy, much more than even housing, although that's increasing as well, and certainly much more than the rest of business. We're lending to, to the rest of business is contracting by over $700 million last month. What's happening here is that farmers... They're not investing in new races or in big new rotary sheds or anything. Uh, they're essentially burning through cash, paying off the interest on the big debts they've got. So really the, the banks are capitalising the interest that um, they should be being paid by these farmers. Does this mean that the farmers are in trouble, that they're borrowing a lot more? Yes, okay. yes. And it's not to invest in new production or anything. Or And, and there, there will be some of it which is seasonal. But still, the amount of money going into the farming sector from the banks is astonishing. Also, we're seeing a slight uptick in lending to housing, as you'd expect, as the housing market starts to recover and we head into spring. But the really interesting thing is that the amount of lending to business, so regular small businesses, even big businesses, that is dropping as banks wind back those credit criteria. Could that be a worry? Yes, for the whole economy, because that those small and big businesses are where so many people are employed. And the banks are really playing tough with, with businesses right now, which okay. is which is uh, tough for the economy. Merrick Finance and South Canterbury Finance, where are we with those? How worried should people be? Well, later on Friday, both of them announced uh, big losses for this financial year and said they were still looking to find extra capital. Remember, a couple of weeks ago, they were downgraded from investment grade to double B plus, which is non-investment grade, and they both want to get those credit ratings back. To do that, they both have to raise frankly, hundreds of millions of dollars from investors. At the same time as uh, PGG Wrightson is also trying to raise money. Remember, they're all sort of intertwined, these, these, uh, these companies down in the South Island. This is something the government's having to watch closely and it's one of the reasons it extended the deposit guarantee scheme to give companies like Merrick and South Canterbury time to strengthen their balance sheets. Now, this will come as a concern to some people because a lot of people, will, uh, retirees, will have all their money invested in there. And, and I've taken some personal criticism from what you've said as well, just in the pub with people saying that you'll be putting the fear of God into people with their life savings. Uh, well, the thing is, there's been a lot of finance company failures over the last couple of years, and no one said beforehand that um, there could be a problem here. I did say beforehand there could be problems. In 2005, I warned there was a potential for a collapse in the finance company sector, and I've consistently said that there were big risks, particularly with the the, the sub-investment grade property-related finance companies. Now, American South Canterbury uh, are regarded as the safest of the big independent uh, finance companies. They had investment grade credit ratings. They have broad uh, distribution in their funding. They have a lot of heft in them. And they're, they're pretty well run. And they're run South Canterbury by Alan Hubbard, who's very well respected. And uh, the government, frankly, will not let okay. either of these fail and will make sure that push comes to shove that a bank will take over one or both of them. Uh, also, those people who have their money in these companies, they are covered by the Retail Deposit Guarantee Scheme. Until 2011 now. Yes, but... Those investors who perhaps have set and forget their savings in the past should really be taking a direct interest in what's happening in Merrick and South Canterbury. And um, there's about $1.5 billion stuck in those companies, more than 10,000 people. Uh, just half a minute left. Um, GST on mortgage payments and rents, it'll take the heat out of the housing market. Is it a good idea? Well, it's an interesting one that's cropped up in the last few days. Brian Fellow kicked it off in the Herald. Uh, this would bring in the housing sector into the GST. It's pretty much the only one that's not covered. We pay GST on food, why not in our rent and why not on the services we get from our mortgage? And that would really um, put the heat on the, the housing market. It would be incredibly politically difficult for any government. There's already complaints about the food. So nice idea, not going to happen. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I think um, there'd have to be a lot of other reforms as well. But one to think about.